You're listening to the Slow Ride Podcast. Bites, advice, and rumors straight from the source. The Slow Ride Podcast.com and on Twitter at the Slow Ride Pod. Hello and welcome to the 237 episode of the Slow Ride Podcast. This is Tim in Orlando, Florida. This is Matt in beautiful Minneapolis, Minnesota. And this is Spencer in Boston. Tim, I gotta say, it's 2019 and I'm a little... I almost miss uh, 2018 Schwamigan winning Tim Hayes uh, intro yeah. spiel. But I know. not enough um, to you know request it back. Yeah, I don't. I'm not going to bring it back. I we're kind of burying the lead here that we had Mitch Docker that we had this we, interview with Mitch Docker. We can't wait to play it to all the listeners. And I failed to ask Mitch if he thought that I was going to be the one that won Schwam again or not. And that was a little, I'm a little disappointed in myself because I have the feeling that Mitch would think that I was the fastest of us three. I think after that interview, I have a feeling that Mitch would have thought I was the fastest out of the three, actually. Mm. I think he would just know that I'm the fastest because it seems, seems like he's a big fan. Probably been listening to the back episodes. He's got all the like history, you know. Well, he knows the truth. It was, it was weird because he was wearing a little guy fan club t-shirt, but I, mm-hmm. I, I, I still didn't even do, know existed. But. Yeah, I still think he would have thought I was going to win. Oh. Well, he was wearing the, the hat of choice was the Parramatta Eels of the rugby league. And we didn't even talk to him about rugby league because we were so in depth about everything else about cycling in Australia. We do our 2019 world tour Jersey draft. And, uh, yeah, that just, that, that went down, that went South quickly once we saw the uh, quality of the kit. So we're I look forward to having you listen to that. But, uh, as always, you can email us at the slow ride podcast at gmail.com. And look us up on Twitter and Instagram. And also, highly, highly recommend listening to The Life in the Peloton, the Mitch Docker podcast. Take a look on iTunes. It's a great show from inside the Peloton. And with that, let's, uh, let's, get, to the, let's get to the interview. All right. So, Mitch Docker, thank you for coming to the show. I have a quick question for you right away. Um, why is it Mitch Bowen on Instagram? And then Mitch Docker, when you race bikes, Mitch Bowen's my or Bowen's my middle name. It's my mum's maiden name, um, and I don't know. I thought it was clever back in the day when the internet sort of started up to include it on my original Skype name, which is what I couldn't use today. Because have you ever noticed there's like a million things now, security checks to like log back into things these days? I just had to create a whole new Skype account because it was easier. And so it's no longer, (laughs) it's just, um, but yeah, it's just my middle name and I just included it and I liked it. (laughs) All right. I was was just curious. There's a, I ride with a gentleman here whose last name is Bowen, Tick Bowen. And he's like, can you just ask him why he he refuses to use his real last name, which is my last name? Because then I'd feel really powerful on the bike if he had it. I like being connected to the Bowen family. Yeah, it was a strong family up here in Coffs Harbour, so it's good to be still loose, lo- loosely connected to them. So, again, thanks for coming on the, the podcast. We've been uh, fans for a while, and I would be remiss to say that uh, the Life in the Peloton podcast that you put together is probably my, at least mine. I know Little Guy is also really into it, and Spencer as well, but uh, favorite podcast within the uh, cycling world, so... Thanks for that. And that episode with uh, Michael Woods was hands down one of some of the best radio I've listened to in a while. Yeah, it was that was a sweet episode. Like um, the most recent one, I don't know if you guys have heard it with Lockie Morton. Um, really good one, actually, too. I really enjoyed doing it. Um, I guess, you know, for everyone out there who hasn't heard the pod before, it's pretty much I created the podcast because um, – aside from your podcast, everyone sort of knows what the cycling is. Whereas I was trying to just explain to people back in Australia who kept asking me those original questions like, 
So do you get paid to ride overseas and like, is it, is it BMX or, and I'm like, hang on a second here. I'm just going to have to explain what life is really like in the peloton. And um, that led from one thing to another for me, just trying to find out what ticks for all the pros and me picking their brains. So um, got some good ones coming up. I've got the cobbler back on next. Nice. Uh, Adam Hansen. Nice. Um, I did him talking about nutrition. It's pretty technical, but um, he's good. He's really good. Does Adam Hansen like the nickname, the Cobbler? I I forgot to ask him again because (laughs) it's pretty pretty intense when you get in the room with him. He's a really he's a really knowledgeable guy, and it was um, yeah. I felt out of my depth just doing talking to him. It was it's it's a good podcast coming up. That'll be in the in an, in another week's time. How often does he reference the sixteen straight Grand Tour starts? <laughs> like, is that just something he walks into the room and is like, hey, I've done, I've I've been through harder. It's on his I, I, I brought it up at the start, but um, because he's not doing it anymore, as you know, but um. Yeah, he was wasn't a big talking point. We we brushed over it real quick. Mm. Yeah, right on. So, mm. I guess that the you know obviously you're going to come on for the it's our most popular episode when we draft the the world tour jerseys. We're going to talk about that here, and we've got a slew of other questions to ask you. But one of the ones that that uh, Spencer came up with right away had to do with the uh, the whole magpie situation down there in Australia. Have you oh, ever yeah, been yeah. hit by a magpie while riding your bike? Have they ever attacked you? We've seen videos. This is like I, all we hear about outside of Australia, about Australian cycling, is that you're just being constantly bombarded by magpies. Well, I'm lucky that I sort of miss that season because it's in um, springtime here and I always come back at the end of spring and everyone's like, oh, you should have been here last month, like the magpies, you know, had to have the zip ties <laughs> on the helmets and everything. But... Okay. um. When I was riding back here before I went across overseas, you used to occasionally get attacked by magpies and it'd be like that one point on top of that one hill. You'd know there was a nest up there and you'd see them coming. You're like, <laughs> you'd sort of almost save your effort because it'd be like at the top of a steep climb or something. The first time like it happens it. to you, you run out of steam and um, the Maggie would get you over the top. Whereas the next time you come up there, you don't do your effort until the top. You're like, all right, go, go. Yeah. So this is like, so, uh, can you judge your form uh, as you're progressing through your training by, you know, whether or not you can get away from the magpie? <laughs> or yeah, that I was just thinking about. It's similar to that. Um, what's that? That film you guys have talked about it too. The cycling film where the guy gets chased by the dog as he's training. You, oh, you mean American Flyers? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's actually happened to me a few times. And like, it's amazing those con- those sprints you can actually do when a massive dog runs out. It might happen to you guys where you're just like, oh my God, that was an, an amazing effort to get away from that dog. So I just make sure I ride with someone that's slower than me, right? Like that's, that's how I get away with it. Somebody else's dog food. Yeah. Yeah. That must be tough for you, Jim. <laughs> so you, you're like an uh, education first, you're rocking the bucket hat now you're, you're you're considered the road captain um another question that was uh, submitted to us since you're the road captain on the team and you're, you kind of run seniority now who in the pro peloton is calling the most pee breaks during the race like like who has the smallest bladder like really needs to go to the bathroom all the time you're like seriously again you mean for our team or in the peloton both <laughs> <laughs> well like it doesn't matter if you're not like um if you're not like sort of the the GC guy, like if you're not Woodsy or you're not Rigo, you just take a piss on your own and no one gives a shit. You know, like that's that's up to you to get back on. But like if you're Woodsy or Rigo, you're like, ah, oh, yep, yep, no worries, mate. I'll push you. I'll push you along or I'll stop with you. It's just like crosswind, single file, 50K an hour. But no worries. We'll stop and I'll ride you back on. Yeah, that's cool, <laughs> you know. Um but if it's anyone else, they just have to take care of themselves. So who cares? You know, that's up to them. Um, but in the Peloton, it's something I want to talk about on my podcast is one thing that's changing from the Peloton is that there is no real boss of the Peloton anymore. Like, you know, like I've heard about these days back when Cipollini was in the bunch and things like that. And there was real, we stop for a piss now 
everyone, you know, and if anyone attacked or rode off, then he'd like literally chase them down and helmet bop them, you know, like come along and like punch them on top of the head. Um, <laughs> but like that stuff doesn't really happen anymore. And people just sort of, you sort of take a piss on your own more or less now and be happy if no one attacks. It just doesn't really happen anymore, you know. So there's not a boss of the Peloton anymore? Not even like uh, Valverde? You know we're big fans uh, of Valverde. I'm, I am too, and I wish he was the boss, but he doesn't have that personality, you know? Like, okay. you've got to be a bit... I reckon the old sort of last boss I was talking about it just before was, like, maybe Rob, Robbie Hunter, you know? No one sort of messed with him, and, and if you did, then you paid for it. Um, you got to you got to have a few, bit of balls about you, so there's no one really around like that anymore. Ah, okay. All right, on. So... I don't know. Can you guys think of anyone? I can debunk it or confirm it. I mean, we just, you know, the, from the cycling fan perspective, I, I, I kind of uh, suspected the same thing, but I wasn't sure. I feel like Cancelero was probably the last guy who maybe had that, but I, would I don't think know. Sagan could nah. probably just, you know, snap Can't... his fingers. I mean, he's taking your style with the mustache. I know. Followed. Followed in suit, didn't he? Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um. Yeah, that's funny. Like from the outside, those guys seem like that, but it's it's a massive personality thing. It's not like results wise, you know. It's sure. got, so they've got to be good still, but you've got to be just like you've got to have that personality where people go, "Yeah, I'm not going to fuck with that guy." So within the the peloton, is there like, I mean, you know, you're you're riding along. Is there? Oh man, I really wish I could be friends with that guy, but I can't speak the language with him. Or like, like, or has everyone kind of got a common understanding of English? Like, what's the like? You really want to hang out with Nairo, and you're like, eh, I don't know if I can. <laughs> uh, there is a bit of that, actually. Yeah, like Valverde. You know, like sure, I've spoken a couple of words to him here and there, but it's not like we're rolling up next to each other and having these ten minute conversations. Um, he'd be a cool guy to get to know, and I've heard heaps of cool things about him, like. You know, every day he gets in, he has a beer in the bus, you know, and that's just what he does, you know. It's just like, I, I like having a beer and I'm going to have a beer. I don't care, you know, and that's, and, and we all know, we all know one beer is no problem, so. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, I, so one of the things that I wanted to do here was kind of do some, uh, like, word association exercises, right? Like, like mm. we say some words, names, various, and then you give us kind of the first thing that comes to your mind. And before we get into that, I do have one burning question that I need to know. And you, since you're a senior member of the professional Peloton, is there any chance that Peter Sagan didn't know who Matthew Vanderpool was when he answered that question of, is Matthew Vanderpool going to be, you know, important? He goes, who? I, I reckon there's a good chance. Like, <laughs> I, I, I you just know who I, Matthew Vanderpool I, is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through you guys, though. Through you oh, guys. Okay, like, right. how could you not? Like, if you listen to listen to one of your pods, you know, one of the It's all we talk about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. But, um, like, but he's... about five questions. Yeah, so. maybe not. Like, he's just, like, in a league of his own. I'm not too sure what he gets up to. So, maybe he had no idea. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, there goes all our conspiracy theories. So, I'm Sorry, just going to... Um... <laughs> he right. is. So word association with the word association corner on the slow ride podcast. Um, so what comes to mind when you hear a tour de France? Big circus. All right. A, a, a circus. All right. Uh, Giro d'Italia. Most beautiful race of the season. So they say. Gravel grinding. Lockie Morton. <laughs> okay. Right. Are you right. are you, caveat here, are you gonna be gravel grinding this season for at team education first? Um, I'm as it's pretty nothing's really been confirmed with that. It's like no one really really knows what it is. And actually after listening to your pod the other day, <laughs> I said to Lockie, I was like, Can we actually start Leadville? Because was it Leadville or was it the other one you guys were talking about where you said Dirty Kansas. Dirty Kansas, yeah. And I said, like, can we actually start Dirty Kansas? Because I was listening to the boys the other day and they reckon that we can't. 
<laughs> and uh, and and then he was so like, I investigated oh, this. I, yeah. I investigated this. I called a uh, a friend of mine that works with Lifetime Athletics, and apparently, when you're on Team Education First, you don't have to enter the lottery like us regular <laughs> folks. So I'm pretty sure if you wanted to race uh, Dirty Kenza, you may be able to find an entry. But just you know, email me. I'll, I'll make I'll make sure to hook you up. <laughs> what? One race I do want to do that Woodsy was telling me about is there's this race in Canada and it was just after the um, the one-day races there where he won it one year and you win your weight in maple syrup and oh. it's a gravel race. I don't know what it's called. I looked it up last year because I was like, oh, if I don't do the Vuelta, I want to do that race. And now that we're doing the gravel races, I was telling Lockie about it. I said, we've got to do this. I want to win the maple. Yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. That seems right up the alley of canada um yeah. <laughs> so uh michael woods speaking of michael woods what comes to mind when you hear michael woods pain he loves pain that guy <laughs> seriously if it's not hurting he's like let's just go harder it's ridiculous yeah. so i have to admit a little disappointed you didn't say vo2 max but i'll take the pain <laughs> that's okay yeah it's close it's close it's got to be in the same realm yeah it's in the same sort of Vocabulary. So when, he, when he's throwing down and, and you're like you're you're working for him or, or training with him, do you ever get angry when you look over and he's climbing the mountain, just having a full conversation with you, asking your favorite book, and you're just like, I can't talk right now. <laughs> I'm not. I'm actually not on the mountain with him at any point. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you see someone wearing headphones on a group ride, what do you think? Oh yeah, that that annoys me. That yeah. Um, one word. What's the right good word? Nuff, nuffy, just an absolute nuffy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, two more here. Uh, TJ Van Garderen. Um. Well. One word. I don't know. I'm. I think of new be- new, be- new beginnings. New, new beginnings. beginnings. All right. He's coming We're to our excited. team, and he's going to be. He's going to be new beginnings. I reckon. Yeah. All right, good to see. And then finally, last but not least, the final part of Word Association Corner of the Slow Ride Podcast. What comes to mind when you hear the name Michael Matthews? <laughs> Strong rider. Strong rider. Surprised you did not use the word bling. Uh, <laughs> Such an easy way to sum it up. He is a strong rider. Uh, no, no, he no, is, no. Yeah. yeah. He is. Well, thanks for playing. Um, do you have... <laughs> So, Spencer and Little Guy, before we get into Jersey Corner, mm. um, anything else you want to ask? Uh, uh, Absolutely. All right. I, I have one one burning question now that we've been trying to get to the bottom of for a while, and I think uh, I think Mitch will be able to at least help us um, <clears throat> address this. You know, now that you uh, can see Little Guy here in the video, do you think that he can beat TJ in an arm wrestling contest? I can only see like he's so still so close on the camera. I can't Let's even see, the see guns, your full body. Guy. Let's see the guns. <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm probably not like, bigger than TJ. How how about this? Stronger than me. How uh, how 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 good do you think TJ is as an arm wrestler? Like scale of one to ten. Oh, I can't imagine he's 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 above five. Okay. Like, just just from his physique, he's 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 a GC guy, climber. And those guys are skin and so, bones. He's not so going to be f- very strong upper body, is he? <laughs> For reference, where are you at on the one to ten scale? I'd be a solid seven, I reckon. Okay, ah, nice. yeah. that's yeah. good. Modest, I like it. <laughs> well done. And uh, little guy, you got anything else before we get in? I know that little guy's already chomping at the bit to uh, do the jersey draft. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm relaxed. I feel uh, confident. Um, I, uh, speaking of uh, Vanderpool, I was just kind of wondering what. Like with Wout having a good year last year, are people talking about wondering how Wout and Vanderpool or, or Wout and MVP are going to do this year? Are people like afraid, not afraid, but like you don't really know what what they're where they're coming from. I guess they're like a new thing thrown in the mix. Is that a question to me? Yeah, I think. Um, well, I think Wout maybe gave everyone a little inkling, a little scare, maybe. Like him just sort of float, floating around last year in um, mm-hmm. 
in um, Strata and then the classics, everyone was like, oh, these guys can just cross across, you know. But then, then there's always that thing like if they concentrate – solely on the road do they get better or worse you know like that's always right. been that question you know like it's always been like they're so good when they just jump straight across and imagine if they did more road they're going to be like awesome but is it always the case i don't know yeah not always yeah so i hope not otherwise you just kill us now that um <laughs> well and i'll to, to piggyback on that a little bit for yourself and your upcoming season now that training camp is over down there in australia um what's the uh What's on tap for you? Like, what's, what's, I mean, besides getting into Dirty Kanza and winning your weight in maple syrup, I'm curious as to what's, uh, where are we going to be able to see you racing this year? What's the point? What's the goal? Uh, I'm going from here. I've just seen that I'm reserved for, um, Hood Far in France. So that could be a little wake up call when I get across to Europe, um, heading across to Europe in a couple of days. And then opening weekend. Get some time on the cobbles. Really shock the system. Um, then into Paris-Nice, if the system's not already shocked well and truly there. <laughs> um, that race is seriously the hardest race of the year by far. Like, is it just just because it yeah. comes out of nowhere? It's everything. It's it's brutal. It's crosswinds. It's cold. It's like super hard at the end when you get down to Nice, weather mm-hmm. and terrain-wise. Everyone's super keen to show how good they are with the new season. So, like, every single person's racing every race like a one-day race. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just it's a stressful race. It's just a hard, bloody race. Um, but it does set you up well for the classics. Because you almost go from there and go, you go into the first classic, and you're like, oh, it's a bit relaxed here, you know, like, because you've come out of, like, the most stressful <laughs> race of the year. Um. But then I go into all the classics um, like Dupana, um, E3, Wavelgum, you know, Flanders, yeah. Roubaix, all that stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. So, I, I mean, there's so many questions before we get into the draft. How often do you check your pro cycling stats page? I've always been curious if pros, <laughs> if pros are on there as much as we are. I, I was checking it not long ago, but I, I can't actually work that side. I was trying to find out how many race days I lived, did last year and I was like, I couldn't find it. Because someone said to me, because I was trying to, someone said, oh, how many race days have you done? I was like, oh, I haven't counted it. And they're like, I oh, just gone pro cycling stats. I was like, oh, yeah. And then I couldn't find it and it just pissed me off. And I was like, oh, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so, but every, everyone does use it. They all check results on there. A lot of guys have the app and they check results. <clears throat> so within the um, pro cycling stats uh, website, I'm on your page. You started with, in 2006, pro team Draypack Porsche. Um mm-hmm. Did you get free Porsches? And second follow-up <laughs> question, how do you feel about four-door Porsches? Because that was a big conversation point in the last episode of the Slow Ride podcast. What we did get, we got Porsche bikes. Porsche made a bike for a while. I don't know if you guys knew that. It was no. a, like a, it was a carbon bike. It was a sick bike. Super light. And um, oh, we wow. also got 911 watches. Whoa. And the, the team. <laughs> The team cars were the Canes, but we didn't get individual ones. And we were in, the <laughs> team was only, in the beginning, four riders. So, oh. it oh, was wow. pretty sick. Yeah. I guess that, that that's an okay... Like, four doors for a team caravan car is okay. Like, I'll approve of that. Because it'd be a little awkward trying to get into, like, a 911. And the manager had a, one of the boxes, you know? Yeah. Well, it probably works out because the engine's in the back. So, yeah. you know, you can Good point. You know, put all the bikes in the front. <laughs> so yeah, it works out. Before we get into the jersey draft, is there? I saw a photo on Instagram of you wearing a sweet Kelme jersey, which goes mm. down as one of our favorites here on the Slow Ride Podcast. Um, what was? Why were you in a Kelme jersey? Is that is that one of your favorite all time uh, kits, or what's going on here? Well, the DS of ours, Tom Sullen, he's um, a good friend of mine, and we, well, we both live back in Melbourne. We're back here, and there's a ride called the the Belgi ride that they do here on a Wednesday morning, early as like 6 a.m. And they do, it's it's barely Belgian because it's just on single track and gravel roads and you got to ride your road bike. And um, he said, you got to come to the Christmas Belgi, which is just before Christmas. And then you do this loop, like they, they rip on this loop. I 
fair dinkum just got ridden straight off the wheel and I was going like as hard as I could go. These guys <laughs> motor. And um, the Christmas Belgie ends with waffles and beers at like 7.30 in the morning. But you're supposed to come up like semi-dressed up. And uh-huh. um, I wasn't staying at my mum and dad's house at the time. I, I came in the late night before and I was like, oh, I said to Tom, I said, he was going to wear his old Barlow World kit. And I said, I'll wear my Skill Shimano kit. But I got in late at night and I was like, I didn't even know where that kid is, you know, around the house. So, I went into dad's room. I was like, he's got to have some old cool kid here. I was like, Kelme, sweet. And I remember, <laughs> dad is awesome. But those shorts, I tell you what, those shorts have seen better days. They were <laughs> so loose. But the, the kit was sweet. Yeah. Right. Well, good. we are here finally for the 2019 Men's World Tour Jer- top corner jersey corner draft and so the way this is going to work we are going to do a serpentine draft where we um each go through one at a time and then uh whoever picks fourth would then pick uh first in the second round once a jersey has been selected you can no longer select it again now mitch our pro tour expert has told us that there's 18 teams in the pro tour so we're going to select four each now mitch um just to make yeah. things really exciting, we all know that you're going to take education first um, as the number one pick of the draft. Draft, and we also know that little guy who last year, mind you, took it with the first pick. So obviously, and we, what fun would it be for you to pick your own team first? So little guy is going to have first pick in the draft, um, <laughs> followed by Mitch Docker, who will then be on the clock to pick his real, you know, his favorite kit because he can't choose education first. <laughs> And then uh, Spencer and I will uh, wrap up on the fourth. So if that sounds good, uh, any objections to that order, Mitch? Well, yeah, I would have loved to have picked my own team, but it <laughs> seems I'm not going to get that because I genuinely think that's the sickest jersey out there. Like, come on, it's sweet. Well, we could t- we'll talk about it. We, I'm, I'm yeah. completely on board, and this is going to come up. So, little guy, why don't you uh, pick first <laughs> and then just get it out of the way? I obviously take education first. Uh, <laughs> so, education first. Little guy, why are you picking that, that kit first? It's the best kit. It was the best kit last year. It's the best kit now. The hats. The hats, hats look sweet. Do you have a bunch of those hats, Mitch? Do they just give you one? I think they, they sort of bug it up there because... <laughs> They made that I don't, hat I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but I think they planned on having heaps. But when they got to Down Under, they didn't realize how much in demand they were going to be. And they would have just <laughs> run out the door. And they literally only had, I don't know, like say 100. And they were gone in a second. And yeah, I've got one. And everyone asked me, can I just get one? Like, you know, like they're the little race caps that we can throw out. I'm like, I only yeah. have got, I've only got one. Oh, but, wow. Yeah. So they're, they look great. I'm yes, all in on the kit. I agree with you. And Mitch, I I like it. Spencer, you may you may have heard in the last episode, kind of was throwing a little bit of shade on the kit because of the hat. Uh, the hat's maybe not my favorite. Oh, the hat's great. <laughs> but it, it's I reversible. Do it, have you seen yeah. the other side? Yeah. No. I my mind is blown. It's reversible. What's the other side? So the other side's like a denim sort of color. Oh. And then yeah. <sighs> all right. So, one quick question about the Education First jersey before we move on to your pick. Uh, It is a a vast departure from last year's kit. Which one do you prefer of the two? Like, if you had to put them in order. This year, by far. Like, last year was nice because we got a bit of flair happening. And I I, I actually liked, I don't know if you saw our training kit. It was an orange kit. Um, I preferred the orange kit over the pink. But um, okay. I still like that we had a bit of flair about it. But then this year is just, there's no comparison. It's it's sweet this year. So, right. I got to be honest, you guys kind of tricked me a little bit. I thought we were going to be seeing the all black kit that you guys unveiled for yeah. the Aussie Nationals. And then you kind of threw a swerve of this tie-dye monstrosity that little guy would have designed in his backyard. Um, <laughs> and I like it. It's good. So... All right, L- little guy, solid pick. So, Mitch, now, now at the moment of truth, there are seventeen remaining teams in the Pro Tour. What is your second, or I'm sorry, what is your favorite jersey in the Pro Tour that isn't Education First? I'm gonna have to go with 
the new CCC kit. Mm. Interesting. Wow. Because, like, initially I didn't really love it. I thought, oh, yeah. And it, re- it really grew on me throughout Down Under for a couple of reasons. In the Peloton, when you see that jersey from afar, it actually looks exactly like our jersey. Like when when they're going in the break and stuff, you're like, oh, we've got one there. You're like, oh, oh no, we don't. Shit, that's CCC. <laughs> and also for the second reason is it's exactly like our training kit last year. It's the orange on the top, the black mix. And that's what I liked from our training kit. So, okay. I don't know, the fade's on. Nostalgia. Not, I'm not loving the fade on, on it, but- it's a pretty good kit. I like it. It's a major yeah. upgrade over the BMC kit from last year. I will say and, that. Like, and that. from the CCC kit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it's solid pick. I, I'm a little All surprised right. that that went um, second. And I know that you were under the gun that you wanted to take education first, and we kind of screwed you over classic slow ride style. But, um, yeah. you know, what fun would that be? So Triple C, nice. Spencer, with your first mm-hmm. pick in the first round. Um, <clears throat> I... Uh, I don't have to change my notes much because CCC was actually not in my list here for oh. for all four picks. Um, just going to throw that out. But uh, I think with my first pick, although it has not changed uh, I discernibly from uh, from last year to this, I'm going to choose the Bora Hands Girl kit uh, with my first oh. pick because it's, uh, it's just been solid. It looks good. And... Uh, uh, although, you know, Sagan's still not going to be wearing it um, because he, he managed to uh, get that national team kit rather than the uh, the world championship stripes. Um, you know, I think we'll still see we'll still see it on the front of the pack uh, looking good. Nice. Not too bad. Um, I like I the will... vital concept version of it better. Yeah. Well, there's that. <laughs> it's basically the same kit, but with more more lines. They're not in the world tour. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, they're not in the world tour, but I mean, you know. I'm sure that, uh, Mitch, you enjoy seeing the uh, the small non-world tour teams in the races with you. You're just like, oh, go ahead. Please take this wheel. It's good to have you here in the world tour with us. <laughs> <laughs> Tread lightly. <laughs> we, we, we had that problem yesterday in the Sun Tour. Like, it was, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what? It, yeah, you know, like don't you know who you are? Okay. Anyways, um, wrapping up round one, I am gonna take uh, my favorite uh, kit, and that's AG two R, just because uh, before you jokers take it, the brown yep. shorts, the um, the brown shoulders with that nice blue body, it's you can't beat it. AG two R, come on, own it. All right, fair. It's tough to argue with. Well, it looks like Mitch isn't so into the AG two R. Would it like it's it's tired, it's old, you know, like come on, let's get it going. Like it's it's been the same for so for already since they in- introduced the brown. How many years ago did they do that? That was like their big change. Yeah. It's kind of like Lamprey having pink and purple forever. <laughs> yeah, but at least they had pink. <laughs> not brown. Yeah, true. <laughs> the Yeah, the AG two R it is the second year of that kit, um, but I it still ranks up there. And then second, I'm going to pick a new kit this year. Um, so oh. my first pick in the second round, I'm going to go with uh, Red Lotto, Lotto Sudal. I, oh. like the dot, I like the dot matrix fade. Um, it looks pretty awesome when Kaylin, uh, Caleb Ewan is winning sprints with it. I thought I wasn't going to like it, but all the pictures I like, I like it. It's Interesting. a fun kit for me. Okay. Is that even that's, on any of your guys' list? That was another one that's not on my list. Oh, yeah. wow. All right, I, uh, I totally blew a pick here. I feel like Red Lotto is <laughs> when they debuted that red uh, kind of kit when they changed like 2012, uh, 2013 around there. Um, they came out with that retro throwback style. It's just gotten worse every year since then, <laughs> and I don't know how they've done it. Yeah. All right. I I I like it. Anyways, right. um, Spencer, what do you got? Uh, I'm also going for a retro style kit. Uh, a little bit new to the Peloton this year. I'm going to go with the Trek Segafredo kit. Mm. Oh. That uh, that one is a banger this year. Yeah. Do you, do yeah. you like it better than the old Trek ones that had the um, the pinstripe? I do. I don't like the pinstripes. You don't think there's a little uh, bit too much red, though? It's a little too formal. 
Yeah, there's, there's a lot look, of red I just, in the Peloton, isn't there? Aren't you a little confused? Yeah. Mm. Well, okay, am I next? Fair. Uh, fair. Uh, am I next? You, you're next, Mitch. Yeah. Going. Yep. Let's let's just keep it on theme then. I'm going for the Sunweb kit. Red. Hmm. This like that? that's a kit that when I first saw it, I didn't like, and the more I saw it, the photos popping up and the videos, uh, I really do think that Sunweb kit looks great. Mm, I like it. They got that little fade on the bottom, though. That's like the only part that I'm a little. Uh, well, it's about. it's all the rage. You all gotta right. do. You gotta have a fade this year. Yeah, they do too. I'm just <laughs> looking at it now. Yeah. And, and little guy, what do you got to uh, wrap up your? Fr- uh, woo. it's already getting kind of tough. I'm gonna <laughs> take. Uh, I guess I'll take FDJ. You gotta get those jumbo jets flying. Okay. The FDJ kit. Now, Abby Mickey. Wanted us to talk a little bit about this kit. It's just not as good as it used to be. It, that kit has gone downhill. It's a it's a slow descent. <laughs> it is a slow descent, but you know they started so high. It's true. What, are you a fan of that uh, FDJ kit, there, Mitch, or uh, just kind of you forget about? Not at kit? all. Like FDJ, they just. <laughs> Should they go back to that one where they had the numbers trickled all over it? You know. Back in like Brad McGee days. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. All right, little guy, your uh, your next pick for round three. So your third jersey. Um, dimension data. Oh wow! Really? Ugh. All right. Oof. So I want him. <laughs> it is it is nice and plain. It's a little I bit think like it, a yeah. club kit. You know, they've clean they've cleaned it up. I reckon this year with just the black nicks, Asos involved. It's a cleaner nicer look but still not blowing you out of the water no <laughs> yeah yeah it's a, it to be perfectly honest after the first four or five i mean there's four or five jerseys that i think i would even consider buying out of the world tour right now like it's kind of slim pickings this year so um with that mitch what's your uh, third pick um <laughs> uh, my next pick is katusha Ah, nice. It's a solid like, looking kit. Do you own any Katusha gear? Like the, the streetwear? Like the jeans or the t-shirts? <laughs> Me or little guy? Like the clothing label? <laughs> no, I don't, I just, unfortunately. I don't know how the clothing label is doing for Katusha, so I'm curious. Because <laughs> they've got those funny slogans as well. Like, what is it? Like, ride to win or something like that. It's like, well, what else are you doing? Riding to lose? <laughs> <laughs> that is lost in translation from the Russian, I guess. <laughs> Probably. I'm just waiting for their rap album after the Astana banger that came out a couple weeks ago. <laughs> oh, how is that? Uh, yeah. How's that going over in the oh, Peloton? Everybody yeah. really impressed? That was unwatchable. <laughs> I try to watch it, and I was just like, <laughs> it sort of circulated a tour down under. I was just like, what, what even is this? I had, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't get through it. <laughs> How do wow. you, how do you, uh, yeah, do you feel like you can't talk to any of those guys ever again? Like if they roll up next to you and try talking, it'd be hard to look them in the eyes. Uh, one particular guy. Yeah. Maybe even before the, the rap scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. I, I mean, it was a banger. That's for sure. What's the, so we, we little guy suggested that Taylor Finney would be the, the education first writer that's going to have a rap album coming out. Um, do you, do you concur with that? Is that like kind of the, the next rap, could, the next, sorry, music video coming out of professional Peloton will be Taylor Finney. You know, who it probably will be is Matty Breschel. Matty, have you seen any of his stuff? No, yeah. no. He's got his own band and he does like their own sort of like live recordings and stuff. He's awesome. He's actually an awesome perfor- performer. So I, he would be fair income proper. Oh, all right. Okay. You heard yeah. it here first on the Slow Ride podcast. We're going to be listening to some Maddie Breschel um, bangers. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. So with Katusha off the board, with yeah. by the way, the baby blue jersey. Um, it's very good. It it is mm. kind of nice. It's a it's a nice uh, change. I I do like it. Um, good pick. Spencer, who's your th- who's your third pick? You know, we're getting down. There's not a lot. Uh, 
not a lot left. We're getting we're getting kind of far down the draft order here. There's still a really good one. <clears throat> I think the best of the bunch remaining is is one that I definitely didn't like when it uh, debuted. Uh, but with the competition left, I'm going to take it, and that's the new uh, Sky jersey. Oh. Um, the dark blue <laughs> to black. Again, not my favorite, but oh. compared to uh, some of what's left in, in out there, How's not it that bad. Different? Is it even different from the last five years? It's. Not, it's I don't think so... there's a baby blue stripe on it, is there? Maybe there is on the back. <laughs> I don't know. Is it's, there an orca on it? On the, probably on the inside. Yeah, it is. That sky kit, I think, when it first started with the all black and just simple sky, was nice. But the the blue shoulders, the black fade, Spencer. I know we're in the dry here. Blue? It's blue on the shoulders. Pretty sure it's blue. Yeah. It's oh, blue. okay. Wow. Uh, maybe I'd have to see it in person to know that because it just looks wow. black when I see it. Oof, that's uh, yeah. I'm well, disappointed, but I'm also happy that Spencer, you left my um. I, I knew that you guys were going to let this fall all the way down to me, but I will happily take Movie Star jersey because mm-hmm. um, mm. a it looks good. I like the blue, and Alejandro Valverde now is going to be representing the w- World Championship stripes, so it's going to look even better next to those. And uh, so I'm pretty excited to take Movie Star off the board. Um, apparently, we were it's going to take a little while to see Mikel Landa wearing the uh, the Movie Star <laughs> jersey. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, if you'd watched that one race, you would have seen it. I know. Ugh, kind of disappointed. Um, all right. And my last pick um, of the jerseys, there's a lot here. And there's, I got to, <laughs> we are kind of in the dregs. So I'm just going to take yes. it. I, I I think it looks better than the rest. And that's the Bahrain Merida kit. Oh. Um, I just like the, uh, the, navy blue with the red contrast so uh i'm gonna go with bahrain uh merida so i am off the board with ag2r lotto movistar and bahrain and i've already got gonna win the fan vote um after that amazing <laughs> selection of teams um spencer who's your last pick all right um man <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad. uh i'm gonna go ahead and take um Yellow Lotto off the board. I knew it. Yeah, I'm not not even sure what if what their sponsor name is right now, but Yellow Lotto perseveres. Uh, that is that is how I'll always refer to them. So both the Lotto teams with the dot matrix fade. Yeah, they just jumbo now. Yeah, they are Probably. just jumbo. But could be. Yeah. They're the yellow team. Uh, they keep got, track. They got that other sponsor there, Yuzma or whatever it's called. What is that? Yeah, that's what Google's for. I don't, for, I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right. So, um, Mitch, you have four teams left to choose from. <laughs> They're all pretty bad. <laughs> They're all my pretty last, bad. We, my last team was going to be Movistar, so you took that. Um, mm, I, so, Tim, what's left on the board? Can you so run what's through? what's left is I, is I can see. Yeah. yeah. U- UAE. Astana and Mitchelton. Mitchelton. Oh God. <laughs> oh no, man. I'm gonna go I tried to erase that one from my memory. I'm gonna go quick step. Just yeah. I don't love it, but you know what? It's the best of the best of the rest. Yep. Yeah. It's fair. Good old quick step. Oh yeah. That that stock went down. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to chisel that off our Mount Rushmore of teams. <laughs> so yeah, little guy, you have the you have the opportunity. To, there, there's three teams left. <laughs> Who is gonna be selected out of the dregs? This is I guess I'll pick bad. Astana. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I mean at least it's some color. That's so, that's true. So that means that Mitchelton they're, they're Scott, a multi threat. I mean, they got the music. They got the it's true. They got Vino. They got Vino. So, oh man, what a that means Mitchelton Scott and UAE are next or last. So, do you guys think that this is the worst year of professional Peloton kits after it's so top heavy? There's like three really good teams and then after that it just kind of sinks down. Yeah, there's not a, there's some uh 
this, I don't know. There's some forgettable ones. With the Mitchelton Scott guys, do you ever like just laugh at their kits? Like you look at them and you're like, look at what I'm wearing. I'm wearing this beautiful tie, hyper color tie dye purple pink, and you're wearing that. Do you ever say that? I hope you would do. Well, you one thing I've, <laughs> one thing I have been saying lately is that, you know, you don't have to. I don't have to put any kind of like flair into my kit. You know, you'd always try and individualize it a little bit. You know, if it could be like a sock here or a glove there or whatever it might be. But now you're just like, you know what? I'm pretty happy just wearing the full team apparel because it's sweet. Yeah. Now you, you got a nice looking looking kit there. And then the bucket hat, hopefully when you're on mm. the podium this year, you can, is, is that like part of the directive? Is that if you ever make a podium, the team has to supply the bucket hat? I'm assuming that that's, unless you win like Classico San Sebastian and you get like their cool hat. <laughs> well, they've, they've, <laughs> They've based the kit off um, like a 90s sort of skate wear. So some of our casual wears, like remember everyone used to wear the long sleeve t-shirts? So we're like long sleeve t-shirts with print down the arms and the bucket hats and the tie-dye. So it's sort of based off like a 90s sort of skate wear stuff. Ah, nice. Mm. Well, thanks for playing the uh, the Jersey draft. I, you know, so far it's been a success. Um Thanks for playing along and thanks for coming on the show. Is there anything else you want to uh, ask us, for instance? Because, I mean, it's not every day you get to come on the show. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I mean, we've only had, I think, four guests. Um, You've come on before George Hincapie, which is good. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Very very elite ground you're trotting on. Um. No, just keep it, keep keep the pod going. I like it, you know. Like keep the results flowing in. Um, keep me up to date with the, what's going on in the peloton. Pretty much. <laughs> less, All right. less, less cross stuff, more road stuff. Is my request. Well, uh, this. Well, you're at, at at the tail end of this episode. We're we're gonna have to squeeze in a little bit of cross, but then we'll be done with it for another year. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's that right. time of year, but, uh, you know, and, and you, uh, keep the Peloton informed of, you know, what we're talking about here. So that's, you know, this is a two way street. Yeah. yeah. No, if you can I do anything to get, um, Michael Matthews on the podcast, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask him boys. I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll, I'm sure he'll come on. Awesome. Nice. Well, thank you. And then, so you're flying back to, you go back to Girona here. Is yep, the, I'm heading. Is that the plan? I'm heading. Yeah, heading back on uh, Thursday. A couple of days here, relaxing. It was really hard the racing. Um, the the sun the sun tour was way harder than tour down under. Like to win. Why is that? Well, it's just it's a smaller field, smaller teams, and there's only four world tour teams, so everyone looks to you, and then you end up just racing like mano a mano between the world tour teams. For instance, like. Yesterday in the crit, Sky were trying to control. But in a world tour race, there's so many riders that the race just becomes hard because, you know, there's 18 other teams that are strong. Whereas in that race yesterday, there was only really four other teams that were strong. So if we didn't, or three other teams, Sky are controlling in the three other teams. If those three teams didn't make it hard, then Sky were just going to roll around and everyone would just sit in the wheel. So ultimately, as a world tour rider, the race becomes so hard because you're just like just attacking over each other. Like if we didn't attack, then Sky would shutting us down. Then you just have to attack again. By the end of the race, you're like, I'm screwed. You know, like whereas in a world tour race, you <laughs> sort of follow one attack and then you can get a rest and sit in. And the one attack you ultimately do is at a higher level. Whereas it's almost like amateur racing. Like amateur racing is like bang, 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 bang. Whereas world tour racing is like, hang on. Okay, I'm dropped. And you're like, oh, that was an easy day. But you just sort of can't go with the one explosion. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. a little bit like amateur racing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like but like every am- category four or five race I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> amateur racing. I always say this, like amateur racing. If you're getting to the end of an amateur race, you're almost winning it. Whereas if you finish your world tour race, yeah. you're still so far away from winning a world tour race. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? That's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's got to be a whole nother level. So you're going to be heading to Girona and then basing out of Europe. Will you be 
do you, do you think you have any plans to race here in the U.S.? Like tour of uh, Utah, California, or what? What do they kind of have you on schedule? Uh, out of curiosity? Well, I'm d- I'm doing the Giro, so um, I wanted to do California, but that's obviously when the Giro is on. Um, I'd like to put my hand up for Utah, California. I mean Colorado, but then again, they sort of take a pretty climbing dominant team there for um, preparation for the welter and yada yada. But I wouldn't mind putting my hand up for um, the um, Italian races and tying in with that gravel race. Yeah, nice. Mm. Well, that would be. Uh, well, we look forward to it. We also look forward to seeing um, a pink jersey with the education first kit because I want to know if UCI is going to make you have a secondary kit when uh, the Juro leadership is on your shoulder shoulders. I, I actually, after, he- Too much after pink. He- what do you think? <laughs> after hearing the pod, I did mention that also to the guys when you mentioned that the last time. <laughs> but the thing is, we had the pink jersey last year. So, and also yellow lotto have the yellow. In the tour, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm I'm okay. I'm all for you, and I mentioned that we should do the reverse of our jersey. So you have the pink Knicks and the blue tie dye top. You know what I mean? I just do the oh flip. Boy. Uh, How good would the flip be? And you just flip the you flip the bucket inside out, the bucket hat inside out, and you you'd have a whole new kit. Rafa yep. could make yep. millions. Exactly, and we'd have extra kit. Who's doing GC for Giro? Is it Woods? The Giro? I actually don't know. I don't think it is Woods. Uh, it could be TJ. I'm not too sure. I, I haven't, because we haven't, TJ, I haven't been to TJ. the team yet. We're just been out here in Oz. And when we get back, we've got our camp in Feb. So we're going to catch up and do like the whole shakedown of everything. Training camp, team training camp. Do you guys do any type of like paramilitary exercises or like what's the, what's the team building <laughs> exercise? Like you guys hang around and play um, risk. Like what, like what do you guys do to, to build the team? Last year we were traveling over from down under and um, we did it at the end of January last year. And I was like, we've got to do something because I haven't met anyone. And how can I be expected to race with these guys if I haven't even done anything? And I was like, we should just do a big piss up or something. But then again, everyone was going to races and we couldn't do that and it wouldn't work. So I was trying to think of an activity where that we could do that would suit everyone, people who are having time off and people who had to race, you know. And um, someone mentioned that we should go 10-pin bowling. And I was like, 10-pin bowling? And I was like, hang on. Uh. That's actually the most ideal activity. It's a team-building thing. You don't have to really do anything if you want to be like a quiet cyclist. You can have a few beers there if you want to, but if you don't want to, it doesn't mean that you're like one out. Yeah. It was actually ideal, but um, this year I probably wouldn't mind doing something else, but probably 10-pin bowling is going to get another go. Because <laughs> we're, we're, who, we're deep the, in the who, season. Who is the best bowler? Is it- yeah. Do you get a ringer? I won with Lawson Craddock. We were the team. Me and Law Dog <laughs> smashed now, it. Did you guys bring like did you guys have your own bowling shoes? Like 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 you gotta have something, right? Like you gotta intimidate the newcomers on the team. Like you're going bowling. Yeah, you know, I'm sure like, he does this year. <laughs> this year you mean? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll look into it. Have a look online, try and order some uh bowling shoes that I'll use once in my life. No, uh and paint them pink. Can, obviously, yeah. just yeah. talk to uh talk to Adam Hansen. I'm sure he can come up with something for you. Oh, there you go. Speaking of which, speaking of which, I actually picked up the hand sinos when I went to his room to record the pod. Those things are so light. Like I mean, they weigh like two pieces of paper. They they weigh just over what a cleat weighs. Ugh. Wow. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They're so crazy. thin, Good so point. thin, ridiculous. Oh, well, Mitch, thank you so much for coming on the pod. I know it's been a while um, that we've been trying to get you on, and uh, thank you so much. And I know that uh, I appreciate it, and so do all the uh, the fans. You are a, a fan favorite in the Peloton, and uh, so keep it up, and uh, good luck this season. Thanks, guys, and um, 
If you anyone ever gets sick of listening to this podcast, you know what to listen to. Life in the Peloton. <laughs> Definitely life in the peloton. We're gonna we're gonna bump it up the Australian uh, rankings, <laughs> the the, char- the charts. We're gonna go through the roof. No, nah, sorry, it's it's gonna be good this year. I'm gonna take it up to a new level. So um, enjoy enjoy listening. All right, guys, that was. Uh, I think we can pretty much stop recording the podcast forever now because we had Mitch Docker on the show. That was pretty awesome. It was great. Best mustache in the Peloton. It it is, and mm-hmm. when we were in the podcast green room with uh, Mitch, he did bring up that a lot of people have uh, mustaches now, mm-hmm. and you know what's next? Because I will notice that his hair isn't as unique anymore well, because other people have started to bust out the uh, kind of the. Mullet I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's next for the rest of the Peloton. I can't tell you what's next next for Mitch Docker because he is a style leader in the peloton but next year i'm thinking 2020 in the road cycling peloton we're gonna see a lot of bucket hats i think every team is gonna have a bucket hat was that the most revealing thing of the of the interview besides the fact that he took the triple c pull set uh kit to be number two was the reversible nature of the bucket hat i was shocked I so. yeah yeah i hadn't seen any yeah. pictures of it being reversed maybe they're yeah. waiting to reverse it at a later race or something yeah, I mean, oh, amazing. Yeah, my my, uh, my major takeaway on that uh, was just the Jersey draft with how downhill it went quickly. Yeah, just yeah, this is a bad season for kids. You know, I, you, when you glance at the uh, the GIF or the uh, JPEG of all the jerseys in front of you, you're like, okay, but then when you really have to pick and choose, and it, yeah, it goes south real fast. Yeah, um, so. Well, with that, let's um let's jump into our pre lap before we get back and talk a little bit about Cyclocross World Championships. Slow ride podcast. Messi Brasho, uh, think of Saxon. I'm Lauren Stevens, and I'm here at the World Championships Road Race. This is Liam from Podium Insight. It's for Sam Bahadi. I'm Alex Dowser, and normally I'm racing for Movie Star. Here I'm racing for Team GB. You're listening to the Slow Ride Podcast. Right. And we'd like to once again thank Grimper Brothers Coffee for their partnership with the Wide Angle Podium Network. You can head over to wideanglepodium.com slash coffee or just go to wideanglepodium.com to follow the link to Grimper Brothers where you have two great selections of coffee. First up, you have the Espresso Blend Hello Cyclocross Friends. And then you have the world famous Full Schleck blend of coffee and the best part in my opinion is you can get on the subscription plan so you never even have to remember to order once a month they can just ship it to your house and you have all the coffee you could possibly want i definitely need to get set up with that because i'm going through these beans at a record pace um full schleck still hits the spot um much like andy and frank in the peloton it it is just it just treats me right yeah so Check out Grimper Brothers Coffee, wideanglepodium.com slash coffee. It helps support the shows that you already listen to and love here at the Wide Angle Podium Network. So once again, thanks to Grimper Brothers for their continued support. And as mentioned before, we'd like to thank all the listeners and supporters of the Wide Angle Podium Network. Quick shout outs to Cyclocross Radio, The Gravel Lot, Bike Shop CX, and Consummate Athlete for their continued, um, you know, production of independent cycling media yeah it's great to see and guys we have another slow ride reviews that's going to be uh coming online fairly soon mm-hmm. um this is i know that i yeah. i've been riding a lot lately this is an exciting and one so, i'm excited for yeah. this one and uh we got some gears yeah i think everybody will too so if you haven't listened to the slow ride reviews check it out you can find it on itunes or wherever you're getting uh your your podcasts or uh subscribe if you haven't already um Otherwise, an easy place to find it is obviously WideAnglePodium.com, where all the best podcasts live. That's right. Yep. Well, awesome. Let's get back to the show. My name is Matthew Vanderpool, and I don't listen to the Slow Ride podcast.
All right. Cyclocross World Championships just happened. Let's go through the bullet points real quick. American Cyclocross fans, you're going to get your chance to uh, return the glory of the 2013 Cyclocross World Championships in Louisville. Except this time, a river flooding will not... (laughs) Super it will not supersede the race when it returns or goes to Fayetteville, Arkansas, yeah, for the 2022 mm-hmm. World Championships. And for those wondering, yes, we have already booked the club for the 2022 Fayetteville foam party. Have you looked into a great. river? They might have a river there. I don't know the geography. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure the Walton family can build enough sandbags to stop any type of river from flooding. All right, that's all right. that's probably that's, true. That's kind of a bummer because, you know, this weekend was Cyclocross World Championships and it was across the two days, Saturday and Sunday. That's just way too long, guys. That's that's way too much Cyclocross. I, I need it compacted into one day schedule and I, I need to just be blasted in the face with Cyclocross all day for one day and then have another day to recover. <laughs> Every, I think two days, but it should be Friday, Saturday. Really? Mm. Every year I get confused yes. because we went to that 2013 one and it all happened in one day. I I think it's going to be Sunday and I don't make any plans to have time on Saturday. And the last minute I'm always like, oh, crap. And I have to squeeze in, it's, rearranging right. my schedule so I can watch the women's race. Because I every year I Did forget. You, they had a three-hour break between the races today. That's ridiculous. That's just more time Put to drink beer, way. man. I guess next year they'll have the junior women's race, so there'll be a little bit more things happening on the the Sunday. But anyways, what are your major takeaways, um, little guy? We'll give you two each um, as as we as we go through here. So, what are your two bullet points of Cyclocross World Championships uh, in Denmark? One, I didn't think Sane was gonna be able to do it, and she did. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, that was awesome. That was agreed. Obviously. She's a huge champion, and I didn't chat it. And two, uh, Vanderpool won, and he's the greatest ever. <laughs> ever. off ca- That off camber. Wow. That off camber, man. Made it look easy. Okay, so those are your two takeaways. I, w- I would um, – I'll piggyback on your first one. Sané Kant winning. Great. Second, I mean, everyone's talking about Lucinda Brand and the little pit mishap, but I'll give it up for Lucinda Brand for still putting on a heck of a race. It was fun to watch. Seeing Yolanda Neff come up from the fourth row and get all the way up to the front was also really cool. Yep. Um, the women's race was fantastic racing. My second takeaway was I was expecting the women's race to blow the men's race out of the water because I expected Vanderpool to win by five minutes. Mm-hmm. And for about half of that race on the men's side, I was entertained because... There's team tactics. It was kind of cool. Lars Vanderhaar did his best part to like mm-hmm. act like he was working for Vanderpool <laughs> when he sat up. Um, I was entertained for a while there. The off camera was cool. I wish it was muddy because those laps were way too short. Twelve laps, way too short. I mean, like five and a half minute laps in the World Championships. Come on. I yeah. mean, it's it would have been, it, you know, but it, it froze up. What can you do? You make a longer course or in a better venue. <laughs> That's a dude. But that was anyways, a good venue. Just asked me I don't I understand why people are harping on this venue. People harped on it when it was a World Cup too. It's a good venue. It's not as good as I mean the Rome World Cup had a bad course <laughs> in this. Oh my god! Come <laughs> on. The Rome. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, so I got I got some takeaways here, and uh, I think I think the first one is uh, superb Dutch team tactics. That is my first takeaway, and that is in the men's elite race with uh, Vanderpool moving to the front and Vanderhaar chopping Wout cr- like crazy in every corner <laughs> possible. He did and do then, some chopping, yeah. yeah, oh, serious chopping, and then the big sit up after uh, after Tune slipped on the off camber a little bit, so, and he just stopped. He dropped anchor okay. and was just going oh, yeah. backwards. So, it was incredible. I to talk about this a little because bit. Because that next corner after the off camber, you basically had to come to a complete stop and turn 180 degrees and go down the hill. I know, but so here's good. the thing, though. He log jammed that. It, log, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Okay. Vanderhard, he kind of reminds me of like a hockey player that sticks out his stick when the puck's going into the open net just to get the goal. Even though like, like, Oh, Spencer shoots the puck and it's going in. But then I stop the puck to then shoot it in. Yeah, You know what I mean? Just to get 
credit for it. Van Vanderpool did not need Lars Vanderhaar to sit up in that moment. Like that was not gonna like. But it didn't the hurt. Race was it didn't hurt. Over. The goal was still going in, but it doesn't hurt to uh, to take the assist. He, it was it was right. team tactics to perfection. Now my second takeaway is terrible, awful lack of team tactics by the Dutch on the women's side during that race because, boy, did they screw the pooch. They had the chance to la- Lars van der Haar that race uh, a few different times, and Very they true. were on a total different page, which was crazy to me because the, the you know the, the Dutch did it in one race and they did not do it in the other, and those are my two takeaways uh, from the weekend. Hmm. Wow. Pretty decent takeaways. Yeah. I mean, it was overall, I was... I'm ready like, for Cross to be over. Like I sort of thought Voss was working to bring Brand back after one or two or three of her first falls. But then sometimes it looked like she wasn't. Sometimes it looked like she was. And you never really knew what was going on with them. No. I felt like, though, even watching it, it was hard to tell who the leader was with the Dutch women because they all seemed kind of gassed. And it, it wasn't clear who was the strongest, you know? Yeah, well, the clearest, like, strongest was Sonic God. <laughs> so well, that was the yeah, problem. No, and that, was, that was the problem is they they were all kind of yeah. gassed. And Voss seemed like at the end she kind of ended up being the strongest. She took those huge pulls. But for a long time, she was dangling off the back. And I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have anointed her team leader. And then she came through in a, you know, yeah. with a big team effort. So I don't know. Yeah, what it, was, do? it, was, it was a mess. Sometimes a triple world champion is just on a huge day and there's kind of yes. nothing you can do about it. And I think tactics or no tactics, uh, pit or no pit, Sonic Hunt was just not going to let that yeah. one slip away. Now, little guy, when you called me, I was want- or when we talked on the phone a little bit earlier today, um, just to uh, my, my finishing thought, I had told you that if there was a roller derby proposition of what would be the highest placed country after Belgium and Netherlands. Yeah. I would not have chosen Spain mm. you, to be at the top. Yep. And, you still and boy, was I wrong. <laughs> he kind of faded there. He did fade, but he could Germany race. was the first place non-Belgian uh, uh, Dutch rider was uh, from Germany. Mm. And I got to admit, though, I was cheering for the Spanish guy really, really hard because it was really cool to see. And I'm sure the whole time he was there like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm in this group. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> How did I get here? I don't know. Don't mess it up. Don't I mess mean, it up. I think everybody was, was cheering for him. I mean, who, it was who so wouldn't? Great to see. It was the ultimate underdog <laughs> since we didn't oh. know who he was. I was like, what is this kit that's at the front? Like, it's it's not blue or orange. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, guys. I mean, like I said a little bit earlier, uh, it may be time to just wrap up the old podcast because we got Mitch Docker on the show. It was a success. We've gotten our press pass to the 2015 World Championships. I don't know where else we can go from here. But. It's Fayetteville. I mean, Fayetteville, yeah, okay. Well, there you go. And uh, once again, thanks to all of our listeners and supporters of the Wide Angle Podium Network. Thanks to Grimper Brothers at wideanglepodium.com slash beans for their continued support. Um, we'd like to thank everyone else that has rated and reviewed us on iTunes or where they get their podcasts and make sure you email us at the slow ride podcast at gmail.com or find us on Twitter and Instagram at the slow ride pod. And with that, this is Tim in Orlando. This is Matt in Minneapolis. And this is Spencer in Boston reminding you to always wave at all your fellow cyclists that you see out on the road. The Slow Ride Podcast. Bikes, advice, and rumors straight from the source. The Slow Ride Podcast.com and on Twitter at The Slow Ride Pod. WideAnglePodium.com slash coffee. Perfect. WideAnglePodium.com slash coffee. And then just a little bit faster, just so maybe this one will work. WideAnglePodium.com slash coffee, not beans. <laughs> there you go. I wish it was actually written out as WideAnglePodium.com slash coffee.
not beans. <laughs> <laughs>